Hello? Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, welcome to Tales with TR. I'm your host, Terry Ryan Jr. And it is great to be with you. I'll tell you where I will be with, where I will be, who I will be with, and where I will be this weekend. Uh, Thursday being tomorrow, I'll be in uh, flying into Charlottetown, PEI, driving halfway across the island. We'll be at Mill River Golf Course, and um, it's going to be a great time. It's a fundraiser that I do more often than not, the Boys and Girls Club fundraiser. Um, Jonathan Diaby and Andrew Anson and Tassia Tellis from Shorzy will be there, avec moi, as will uh, many, many... Um, I know that some of the trailer parks are boys are going to be there. David Ling, Dion Phaneuf. Oh God, Doug McLean. Just a few of the names. This is this is uh, one of the big ones. It's great music, good time, good good food, a lot of fun. And I've been doing this one for over twenty years, in one form or another. I talk about here sometimes about the Brad Richards golf tournament we used to do well this is more of the same people involved than not and uh, we're raising money for a great cause so i'm looking forward to that if you're in pei uh yeah why not come out check it check it out and uh donate some money and there's a link online as well i forget what it is but just uh, go to the check my stories on instagram and you'll have more than enough opportunity to donate. Okay, uh, I'm going to get to another couple questions here. Here we go. From you guys. TR, what's your favorite episode of Shorzy? Okay, listen. I'll tell you guys what my favorite episode is. And it's the one. It's season three, episode four. It's the no-show record party. Now, when you ask me my favorite, I'm thinking more on a combination of the entertainment it provides the viewer because I still watch it and, you know, it's still a good show to me. It's hard for me to be unbiased, but, you know, Penny Lane wants to see it and we watch through and we wait and take our time, try to watch when it comes out an episode every two or three days. And um, I, I guess turns out every, every week, <laughs> but um, we, you know, I, I try to be as objective as I can. So there, and, and when we shoot it, we do it out of order and we're not in every scene. So there is something new about it when I see it, right? But the other side of it is how fun it is to, how positive, I guess, each episode, of course, there's, there's hard work involved, especially the better the episode, usually the harder the work. But I find it the most fun when we're working together. And so this episode is, you know, outside of the, the drunk part and everything and the buzzed part, which was funny to shoot. But the part where we're shaving our heads at the beginning and the end, like we're, that's real. Like we're doing that and we're just having so much fun. And we're talking about, um, you know, as we're doing it with no pants on, when I'm watching it on the, the final product, I'm going, Jesus Christ, like it, it's even funnier than I remember doing it. But, you know, it's often hard to get through. And when I say it's hard to get through because of the lines, um, we we know what the lines are going to be for the most part, right? It's a scripted show, so we're on there. So it's not always that we're laughing at the line itself. It's the way whoever chooses to deliver it, or it's like whatever's going on in the background. If Big Sexy saying like tit fucker or, you know, so he can only say like shut the fuck up, Sanguinette or Michael so much before. It's just so funny, right? Like we. So that's what I mean, like. When we're do and and when you see us the, the heads being shaved and the laughs, especially at the very end, that's in episode six, but in four and, and six, it's very very authentic. Um, that happens a lot, but none more so than episode four and six of season three. I'm telling you, um, and the scenes in the apartment. Now, we've done so many of them. That, and it's usually me, Keese, Dolo, and Goody in those, right? So those, for example, I know going in, you know, like sometimes you're going into a concert and you're in a good mood because you just know that, like I'm going to Green Day August 1st. 
And Senior, I can't wait. I'm taking Senior. Uh, he's never seen Green Day. And my buddy Taran Sam with. I, and, and anyway, and Senior, I mean, a lot of people haven't seen them, but he loves Green Day. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I know that when we're walking in, there's going to be a level of anticipation that adds to the to the excitement and the fun. The the the, the pre concert is is not as fun, but it's it's very positive. It's, same thing when I go to a movie, I like getting there to see the previews. I think those are valuable, and um, you know, in 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 an anticipation sense, there's serotonin released in your brain somehow. There's there's a level of nostalgia as 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 much as you know to the events that you've that reminded you why you're there in the first place. You know, I've been to a concert, I've been to a movie. Um, they've been fun. I can't wait to see what. And then there's also a level of you know anticipation of what's going to happen in the immediate future. That's the way it is for me when I go to do those apartment scenes. Um, the, the, the ones on the ice for different reasons. I know that Marasti and the Nolans were going to get in there. Usually Marasti and I get into some sort of fun disagreement. Um, you know, I, I don't want to get into it, but there's usually, you know, I'm, I'm doing it purposely. And so is he, it's a way to pass time in the room. And we have a lot of fun with that. And the same thing, those, those days are a lot of fun too. The only reason I would put episode four, season three ahead of, and, and equally in the first one, it was that scene in the apartment. We're just getting to know each other and, um, yeah, big sexy's chirping and, and, and we're surprised because for JJ, Frankie, JJ got a couple of women showing up on the scene anyway. Um, but the only reason is because when we're doing those, they're more in order. The hockey, we're going out, you know, we got our shit on, we're at the rink, just to tell you how things are filmed. Um, I guess I can, uh, you know, so we often do the, the scenes, on the ice, we, we'll get rid of them all in a row. So we, we, there's a level of doing it out of order. And then we're not off. The parts on the ice are very emotional. Like a lot of them, at least, are very emotional. And we either have to win or we have to lose. And even though it's funny, give your balls a tug and all that shit, there's like we're doing it. And there's a level of like excitement and drama to it. Right? The other one is just pure kicks. Um, so I'm not saying I... I, I, I like both I enjoy. I don't really enjoy one any more than the other. It's just that it's more obvious to me, the humor in, in, in the, the apartment scenes and who doesn't like humor. I mean, you go into work, you know, you're going to laugh. Um, the other ones, it's more for like getting together with the boys. Like we're on the ice, we're hockey players and that's a sensation in itself. It's a lot of fun. But I often forget, oh, is this episode two of season two or is this episode five? Like, you know what I mean? Because we're going out there and we're going to be the Bulldogs. And I'll see what the scene calls for. Does this call for a big celebration? Okay, it's a big game. It's a big. Um, but the other one is just more cut and dry to me. Like, and, and, and it's usually funny. So we're going in a positive direction. I hope that really sits, helps you out there. That's a bad um in many ways a poor way to explain it but i think you guys can kind of pick up on what i'm talking about there's no bad day on the set of shorzy there's no there is no bad day i'm not bullshitting you i'm not trying to inflate the tires of friends family fans co-actors that might be listening i mean it it's just a lot of fun. Um, I guess if there's days that make me nervous, it might be when I have to do something specifically and I just want to deliver for everybody. But even those days are exhilarating because you get to do it. I, much like a hockey fight, they made me nervous or a hockey game in the NHL. Of course, it's nerve-wracking, but you'd rather do it than not, right? That's what makes it so fun and fucking exhilarating. That's the way I feel when I have a big scene in any movie, but Shorzy because I know all those eyes are going to be on it, and I and, and I like doing a good job for the people who treat me well, that are putting me in a ma major fucking show and doing and showing confidence in me. So there's all kinds of things to digest from what I just said, but the straight up or or another one, the truck when we did the truck commercial, short sporty short box, those days it's I I can't replace them. 
They're, I, I know there will be other days like them, but they're unique in themselves. They really make me laugh, and it reminds me of when I really played hockey, right? When I, when I really played pro and I'm in some city like Sudbury and we're doing that, and it's just hard not to just love every moment, um, except now I'm uh, – getting to, you know, have a coffee in between with buddies. It, it, it's make-believe, but it's very real. Okay. Once again, I had to take a break there. I don't even know if you noticed. I think we might have had like five seconds of technical difficulties. If we did, I'm sorry. Um, my bad. It's my computer. can't remember exactly what I was talking about, but I was talking about Shorzy. I want to bring this up too to people. Um. A lot of you guys that watch, I don't even know if you realize it, because a lot of people often ask me, you know, what it's like to be up there and acting with friends. It seems such good friends now and to take the journey together. It is. Um, and a lot of you ask me, like, if it's if it's like hockey. Well, look, it is in that you're. it's a lot like hockey because we're, we're it, it's based on hockey. So half, half of the whole experience is going to feel like it does in hockey anyway, obviously. Um because we're living it, but the actors, particularly Nat Tassia Tellis and Ryan McDonald, okay, plays Michaels, and then there's Blair Lamora and Kehlani Rose. So Kehlani and Blair are actors as well. They're already actors, right? Um, but in particular, me, me, like, because they're great and they help us and they give us the odd tip, but. Tasia and Ryan were really, really good with me. And, and when I'd gone there, I told you I had a bunch of credits. But I never really, like, a lot of them were stunts. So if you're hired to do a stunt, you're, uh, you know, there's sometimes a line or two, sometimes there's not. And I did do, the biggest role I had by far was a fire in the cold season. I played a real bad guy. And I tried to put my own, spin on that and I had local people here helping me the whole time you know you want to get the vibe from real actors so you know I've never gone into something that I had to actually act and try to do a good job and not seek advice sought advice so but I'm telling you right now that I know I don't have much to, to, to say on Shorzy I mean here and there um, but there's you know Ted Hitchcock isn't, isn't Terry Ryan and I, I've got to and, and, you know, you do it, and, and, and we, we go through that, and Jared and company give us a real flexibility to do it however we want. I mean, the words are pretty static. There's times that we, you know, and again, it's, it's, it's a well-written show, so we don't be in there fucking ad-libbing, and, and nor, nor do we fucking want to. But there's... You know, like I know in my mind I can do it a different way every time, really, and still be Ted Hitchcock, right? But particularly in my experience, I don't know what everybody else would say, but Ryan and Tasia. Tasia with the memory. She gave me so many tips on going over the, the lines, remembering them. Um, you know, Michael's too, Ryan with with with. You know, write little cheat sheets. Bring them on set with you. Um, you don't don't read off them in the fucking scene. But on set, because we're doing a lot of waiting, right? So of course we've got the fucking call. Like we we've got the script in front of us if we want it. It's called a side, right? They write them all down. But when you write it out, that's a when you write it all out, that's like going over it fucking ten times. At least it is to me. I never really thought about that before. That's just a little little part of help. But then all of them, t between every single time we do a scene now, I mean, all of us are like it now. We go over it together, obviously. But Nat would do it so much. She got everybody together at the start, and, you know, we're going to go over this fucking 500 times till we know exactly. Because a lot of it is when to chime in, right? If you're in a scene that's 20-odd pages long, or you often go seven pages without speaking. So, you know, you got to do it together. It's one thing to remember the lines. It's another thing to remember when you got to say them. And then it's another thing to act them. You don't want to just remember them. And Michaels would help me with that. Fucking McD, Ryan. You'd be like, T-Bone, like, here, just come over here because you you still have to act the line. And, and, you know, those silly scenes, like there's one we're doing about space. And I remember, like, I, I'm 
clearly when I watched it, I'm like, okay, good thing he gave me that tip. I was more, more energetic, definitely. Uh, um, I don't know what the word is, but um, it, it, it was clear to me when I watched that scene that Michael's advice helped me. And I, I wouldn't even know how many little tips specifically to even talk about here, but the two of them in particular, of course, Jarrett's there and the Jarrett, but he's got, I'll often say, Jarrett, can, do you want me to do it this way? Can I do it this way? Can I say this word instead of that word? But he's so fucking busy. I'm not calling him the day before going to ask him for acting tips, but we're, um, McD and Tass and company, the rest of us, we practice. We always go over it together and everything. I just mean when I first came into it, they helped me the most because they were very experienced actors that have been down that road before. And it's also, they're in the hotel with us usually. So, um, whereas Jared has his family, you know, and there's producers and casting directors and there's wardrobe and all of them have a decent idea about film. Trust me. And I can get a nice little tip, be a bit of advice from all of them in one way or another. And that, I love that about Shorzy. I just figured you guys are asking, and I often don't give Tass and Ryan enough credit, at least in how they helped me. Subtle, but really, really helped. And uh, anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Bet the action on the ice with DraftKings Sportsbook. With DraftKings, you can bet on any game you want. Whether you want to bet the puck line or the over-under, DraftKings has something for everybody. And if you want, you can throw down on your favorite player as an anytime goal scorer. Or if you're looking for a long-term bet, maybe you want to predict the Stanley Cup champion. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use promo code THPN. New customers get $150 instantly in bonus bets for betting just $5 on hockey. That's promo code THPN as in the Hockey Podcast Network only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or in West Virginia, visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. That's 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. On behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas, 21 plus, age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. See dkng.co slash ice for eligibility, wagering, and deposit restrictions, terms, and responsible gambling resources. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you tend to compare your life to others? Does social media play a part in that? What do you do when you get caught up wishing your life looked like somebody else's? Comparison is the thief of joy, and it can be easy to envy other people's lives. It might look like they have it all together on their Instagram, but in reality, they probably don't. Therapy can help you focus on what you want instead of what others have so you can start living your best life. BetterHelp isn't just for people who have experienced major trauma. It can be helpful for learning positive coping skills, how to set boundaries, or just empower you to be the best version of yourself. If you're thinking of starting therapy, why not give BetterHelp a try? BetterHelp is entirely online, so it's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Plus, it's easy to get started. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And if it's not the right fit, you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge, no hassle, nothing. So stop comparing and start focusing with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com THPN today to get 10% off of your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash thpn listen i'm gonna be in pa i gotta take off here now my daughter wants a ride up to the soccer field and i've learned if i have time not to say no um out of my own personal procrastination habits or, or laziness right I'm sitting here now. I'm, I'm going to have my work done in a little bit. I'm going on a golf thing tomorrow. I got a ball hockey game at nine o'clock. I'd like to have a little nap, to be honest with you. But my daughter called and said, Dad, I'm in St. John's, but I kind of want to go to the soccer field. I got some energy. I want to do something. Of course, I'm going to take her there. Shoot some balls. Watch the uh, game before you, whatever, or, or before. Whatever you're going to do. 
I like my daughter to be active outside, playing with friends, improving her game, as opposed to being inside on a fucking video or computer screen when it's 30 fucking degrees. So I am going to get off my fucking ass. I'm going to get out there and I'm going to bring her to the field. And on the way, we're going to listen to, I always try to introduce new music when we got these little four and five song drives. What will I, you know what we're going to do today? We're going to listen to Green Day fucking Dookie. There you go. Green Day Dookie. Because I'm going to Green Day soon, because we listen to it once in a while, she knows the odd hit. But um, that's early. It's, I think, a, a, a if it's not a great album, it's a very, very good album. And uh, it's relevant. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to listen to and I'll just put it on shuffle, five random songs from Dookie so she gets a little bit of an idea about the album. And uh, what am I going to do after that? I'm probably going to hang around at the field with her for a little bit, maybe get a coffee, talk to the locals that are there to watch Mount Pearl, whatever age group it is. Talk shop, usually a bit of Shorzy, a bit of uh, MLB, a bit of Leafs, Sands, Canucks, um, actually Bruins. They're, it used to be just Boston or not just, but the vast majority of fans here were Montreal or Boston. And then, of course, in the I'm talking when I was like real young. Um, then, of course, in the 90s, when 90s through the 2000s, we had the St. John's Maple Leafs. So converted a lot of people. We have a ton of Leafs fans here now. Um. With Danny Cleary winning with Detroit, there's more Detroit fans than there's ever been. Michael Ryder won it with Boston, which solidified that. But I got to say, one of the ways, the subconscious ways to know our country is divided, there's a lot of like just Canadian hockey fans here. Like I can name a lot of Senators fans, fucking Flames, Oilers down the list. Canucks. Um, I mean, there's always been Habs and Leafs fans, obviously, right? But. We really are like well represented when it comes to that. And I I don't know if it's maybe it's just TV, you know, like in recent history, Canadian teams are easier to follow, right? And maybe it's highlights or whatever. But I'm I'm happy about that, by the way. I don't give a fuck who you cheer for. But Newfoundlanders were usually one or the other, or maybe a few few sprinkled in. But we have a lot of fans here now from each Canadian base. And I like that being Canadian for some reason. I don't cheer for Ottawa senators per se, but it's nice to see some senators fans, you know, I got no reason not to cheer for them. I try to be as impartial as I can be. But, uh, the other thing is the, 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 the people here, there's a lot more Immigrants, not only from other countries, but immigrants to, is immigrant the word? Newcomers to St. John's, whether it's the oil industry, the, the fishing industry is up on the go again now, more healthy than it's been in 30 years. Or, you know, just St. John's in general is growing. I won't say the same about the little bays and inlets that litter our coasts. Um. All around our huge island, the 14th biggest in the world, man. People forget how big Newfoundland is. Um, but a lot of the little fishing towns now have become ghost towns, which is sad. But St. John's is, I, I don't want to say thriving, but it's got to be close to. I mean, it seems that it's forever growing. And uh, prices aren't exactly cheap. Someone's buying it. Someone's going to these restaurants. And, you know, bars and restaurants tend to be jammed. I know that. There are people listening saying, well, what the fuck? I'm not doing, well, you know, whatever. I get it. I'm not saying that things are perfect. But um, in my lifetime, I've seen St. John's and area a lot worse, put it that way. Um, it's a very enjoyable place to raise a family either way. But lately from the roads to the, sporting facilities to the food and, and, and 
beverage industry downtown, the tourism industry, the cruise ships that come in. We never saw one cruise ship growing up ever, not till like the 90s. Now we got fucking huge yachts, cruise ships, the, 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 the movies being filmed here and TV shows. So again, who do I, how do I know? These are all anecdotal things that I'm observing, but it seems to me we're in a decent place. Why did I go there? I can't remember what I was talking about. What I do know is that I'm going to drive my daughter to the soccer field right now, and I want to recommend all you guys, if you're in St. John's, why not drop by? Trinity Pub, TJ's Pub, Rob Roy Confusion, the Martini Bar, Bull and Barrel, and of course, Green Sleeves. You're going to go for a bite to eat, why not do it at Blue on Water, Loose Tie, or Wedgwood Cafe, which also do catering. If you're going to work out, go to Power Conditioning, Strength and Balance for the Body and Mind, Power Conditioning, Rope Walk Lane. If you want to avail of the services of Mr. Lube, why not? Go to one of the locations here in beautiful St. John's, Newfoundland, and Labrador. One's on Kemmer Road, Loves. one's on Torbay Road. Live, laugh, loop. Pipple Pain Relief, pain sticks that just don't quit. Go to pipplepainrelief.com, see what all the fuss is about. Muggsy jeans, great comfort, great fit. I love my Muggsy jeans. True hockey, take what's yours. Folks, I'll be back just a couple of days with more Tales with Tierra. See you this weekend. Charlottetown, Summerside, and the rest of beautiful Prince Edward Island. Catch you guys on the rebound.